Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to talk to you about the use of pentatonic scales in improvisation. summary of what a pentatonic scale is. It's a five note scale and if we look at the major pentatonic, uh, if this is the major G major scale, if we leave out the fourth note and the seventh note of that scale then we get I did a previous video about the use of pentatonic scales in folk playing and in folk melodies and today we're going to look at the use of these pentatonic scales in improvisation in gypsy jazz, in blues, in country music and in rock um, and it's very relevant to all of these. Your starting point no matter what key you're in is to play one octave of the pentatonic scale so that's the key of D starting on a D. That's the key of E starting on an E. And then having done that you should try and work out uh, all of the notes available on that scale within first position. So in the, key of, in the case of G it would be... So we're not going from a G at the bottom to a G at the top, we're just concentrating on what's available in that one position. Um, if you are starting on a key which is, uh, let's say E, then there's going to be some notes left at the bottom, so I'll show you how I deal with those. So I go down and then I come back up and end on the tonic. And um, once you understand either what it sounds like or what the intervals are, you should be able to work out any pentatonic scale for yourself. But I have done a sheet of all of the pentatonic scales, the one octave, the full first position and the relative minor. And that is on my Patreon page if anyone wants to join me on there, they can get that for free. Um, now when I teach jazz, the very first thing I do is to put on the backing for something like Diner, which is a simple tune in the key of G major. Uh, in today's lesson we're going to look at a tune called Head First, which is pretty similar to be honest, and that is from my Exploring Jazz Violin book. So I'm going to use that to demonstrate first of all just playing up and down the scale and then we'll see where we go from there. <laughs> Now what I did there was very simple and also very simplistic. Um, it doesn't make for the most exciting of soloing, but you'll notice that it does deal quite handily with all of the chords there, including one or two diminished and a few chords which don't exactly fit uh, within the scale of G major. But the pentatonic scale is a very robust thing and once you start playing in it, uh, most things sound pretty good. Um, you notice a change to the uh, relative minor. He went from G major to E minor in the middle and I took no account of that whatsoever and it sounded absolutely fine because all of the notes of the G major are also in E minor. Um, when you do this kind of improvisation, uh, any set of adjacent notes, let's say three notes next to one another, are going to make a melody. And if you keep a... a um, 
a simple phrase and you repeat it several times, then it will sound melodic and it will sound thought out, no matter what those three notes are, providing they're adjacent notes. So just have a listen and I'll show you what I mean. So that was working pretty well. Um, to be honest, a, a computer could generate a solo like that. Uh, but that's not to say that you can't be uh, sophisticated and inventive using pentatonic scales. The main thing is that in the long run you don't want to use them all the time. Um, but as a beginner, um, then they are very useful indeed. It takes away all the stress of choosing what notes to play because uh, all of the notes are going to work. Just one warning, if you try this on the girl from Ipanema, then you will be shot down in flames. As I discovered uh, about 35 years ago. <laughs> um, so, uh, one thing about these scales is it's good to learn patterns which you can use repeatedly. Stuff like... Uh, that kind of thing, or... And that last one in particular was fearlessly championed by Michael Ubaniak, the uh, Polish jazz fiddle player. On his album in 1999 called Ask Me Now, uh, I think he probably just learnt this lick because he used it no less than 49 times <laughs> on the album. And if you think it's really sad that someone like me would spend the uh, best part of an hour counting that, then I agree, <laughs> it is a bit sad. <laughs> anyway, it's a really useful lick, as he discovered. Uh, I'm just going to give you a little bit of jazz funk and I'll use um, a couple of licks like that just to see what it sounds like. And uh, if you look in my rock violin book and my exploring jazz violin book, you'll find quite a lot more examples of that kind of lick and that kind of feel and more on the improvisation in that style. Now, uh, when you move on to rock and blues, um, the pentatonic scales are equally important. And um, it's very useful to understand the difference between the E major pentatonic and the E major blue scale, the E minor pentatonic and the E minor blue scale. So, um, looking at E major, that's the major pentatonic. If we add to that the flattened third, then we have the E major blue scale. Looking at G minor pentatonic, if we add to that a flattened fifth, then we have the E minor blue scale. Uh, so that's two different blue scales, two different pentatonics, um, but they are very closely related. And the uh, major pentatonic and the major blue scale are interchangeable. 
So you add one note in and you get the blues scale, you take that note out and you get the pentatonic scale and similarly with the minor. So if you are concentrating on playing the E minor pentatonic and you slip in some blue notes then that will become the E minor blues scale and no one will notice the difference. Uh, the great mystery of blues is that uh, very often you can play both the major scales and the minor scales, one or the other, or both, um, on the same song, in the same key, with the same chords. And I will now demonstrate uh, the four different scales over an E major blues. Start with the E major pentatonic. Now, when you're deciding which of those to use, um, actually the best way is not to decide at all, not even to think about it. When you've been doing this for a few years, then it will be the case that you don't have to think about any theory, you don't have to think about major or minor. You can think how the old blues guys did, which is just purely about what it sounds like and nothing else. Uh, but when you're learning, then it's very valuable to have these consciously in your mind, and when you're practicing, to practice first one and then the other and then the third and then the fourth scales. Uh, there'll be some uh, sequences where the, um, the chords are major but the minor pentatonic really won't work. And um, that will often be the case, for example, in gypsy jazz, if the one chord is a major seven or is sometimes a major seven, then your flattened seventh is not going to work and your minor pentatonic is not going to work. If the one chord is a seven, then the minor blues or minor pentatonic will almost certainly work um, at least as well, if not better, than the major. If you can't work out why one works and the other one doesn't work, then that's probably the reason. Now, one of the most valuable things that I have learnt um, about playing pentatonic scales um, is what I call the fiddle capo method. And let's go back to the G major pentatonic. That's with open strings in first position. If we do the same thing in third position, starting on the first finger on the root, then we've got 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4. Now, what's great about that is that that is movable to any key whatsoever. So if you were playing a F sharp major blues, then you could do that. If you were playing a um, G sharp blues, that is just as easy as playing in G major. And if you think about the notes, well in fact I wasn't thinking about the notes at all. I had no idea what any of those notes were. What I did know was that I started in the right place and I finished in the right place. I'm, my fingers did the work because the work was exactly the same in G sharp as it was in G. So uh, if you learn nothing else from me in the rest of your life and in the rest of my life, <laughs> learn that lesson <laughs> and you'll be very glad of it. Uh, now we're going to finish off with some um, country because the blues and the pentatonic scales are very valuable in country music. Um, going back to what I've just shown you, if we're in the key of G and first position, then if we simply add open string drones, then we'll get this kind of feel. Which is just a pentatonic scale with drones, but now sounding very country. And if we do the same thing in third position, 
put the first finger as a capo across the G and the D above it, like that, and drone a lot using those open notes. sharp and still managed to get that uh, down home open string type of sound simply by sticking with the pentatonic scale keeping my finger across both notes and droning a lot so that is a great trick uh, let me show you um, the sequence of will the circle be unbroken and uh, we'll do that in G and then I'll play you out with that in A flat <laughs> and that you'll get something out of it. If you would like a copy of the dots that I've used then do subscribe and send me an email. If you're enjoying my videos in general and would like to help support the work that I'm doing then do please consider joining me on Patreon. So we're going to finish off with the impossible task of playing a country song in the key of A flat. See you again soon.